Good morning. My name is Wesley Hoddit. I'm a staff attorney with the Institute for Justice Texas chapter. The Institute for Justice is a nonprofit public interest law firm dedicated to restoring constitutional limitations on government power. We're here today to discuss the release of my new report, Houston, We Have a Problem. And this report is one of eight city studies that have been released today by the Institute for Justice in Houston uh, and in seven other American cities. The reports address how America's cities are holding back America's entrepreneurs. And with me today are a number of entrepreneurs in Houston uh, who are being held back by city regulations. To my left, I have Dallas Foster of Texas Boys Balloons. And to my right, Suzanne Poole, the president of the Houston Professional Towing Association. I'll describe a few key findings of my report and then Suzanne and Dallas will both address how their specific industries are affected by the city's regulations. My new report, Houston, We Have a Problem, discusses how the space city's regulations are preventing entrepreneurs from taking off. Now, Houston has a proud tradition of fostering entrepreneurship. It's currently in danger, however, of turning its back on that tradition in difficult economic times. Unemployment in the Houston region right now is at nearly 9%. So how can we create more private sector jobs? The solution is less government programs and more entrepreneurs creating jobs on the private sector side. Right now, the city is indulging some of the worst forms of protectionism. It's picking winners and losers in the marketplace when that's not its role at all. The city's role is to protect public health and safety. The city's also begun a program of government-imposed beautification that puts businesses in a position of not being able to advertise what it is they're selling and the services that they provide. For example, the city's taco truck regulations impose burdens on largely immigrant businesses that don't apply to their brick and mortar competitors. Taco trucks are required to submit their menus and including all, including all ingredients to the city for approval. While their brick and mortar competitors can hire services to come and pick up their grease, taco trucks are required daily to go to a handful of servicing locations to, uh, to offload their grease individually. Second, in an effort to make Houston look more like a cookie cutter suburb, the city is now requiring any business that wants to put a sign in more than 20% of its window to get a permit for every single sign. Now getting a permit is not easy. You have to submit a sworn application in person to the city sign administration. That permit costs $35 and must have a drawing of every sign that you're going to put up in your windows. That's unconstitutional. It's also unwise. The city also has responded to a federal lawsuit which challenged its ban on inflatables with commercial messages and imposed nearly a million dollar fine on the city uh, for its regulations by banning inflatables entirely. This is also unconstitutional. It's also unwise. Uh, and Dallas will speak to that in, in just a few moments. Additionally, uh, the city has all but outlawed vending on public streets and roadways. I know because I applied for a city vending permit. I'm a licensed attorney and it took me six hours just to figure out what the city's regulations were. It took me another nine hours trying to convince city bureaucrats that my paperwork was in order. Ultimately, they rejected my application based on an unwritten technicality, and I never got my vending permit. In fact, uh, in a nine-month span, the city issued over 1,500 citations for people trying to sell things on public property. But in the same period, it didn't issue a single vending permit. The city of Houston is making criminals out of everyday sellers. Finally, until recently, Houston allowed a naked monopoly on freeway towing. It carved up the freeway into 11 segments, 
and gave uh, just a handful of businesses the right to work those segments. Challenged again in federal court over their regulations and told again that their regulations were unconstitutional, the city simply reenacted them in different clothes. And Suzanne Poole, the president of the Houston Professional Towing Association, will now address for us uh, what those regulations mean for small towing companies in the city of Houston. Suzanne? Thank you. Thank you so much. Everybody's dream is to own a small business, but right now owning a small business in the towing industry is actually a nightmare. When I started 25 years ago, I had one permit. Now for one truck, I have 12 permits. We can't even submit the same background check, the same drug test to the different agencies that would regulate us, such as Houston, Harris County, Bel Air, and the state of Texas. We've got the Texas Department of Licensing and Reg coming down on us with the highest fines of any industry that they regulate. And we're not against safety. We're not against background checks. We are for that. Our association has always pushed for safety for the citizens and for our drivers. We don't have a problem with disclosing our backgrounds because there's nothing there. We don't have a problem doing our drug tests because we're not using. But the city was sued in 1995 to get rid of the e-tags. And instead, now we have Safe Clear. Same e-tag people. They just renewed a contract for another three years before their contract even expired. And that contract has never gone out for bid. Originally, you paid for the freeway. Now you get it free. But it's 80% of our revenue. Take 80% away from people, add to that the regulations. We've got people going out of business, and you would certainly think twice before you went in. So we're asking the city one more time to look at Safe Clear and see the fairness of it because we're also, as citizens, paying over $4 million a year in free tows for everybody else. Right now, we need police officers. We don't need free tows. If you want free tows, our people will do that for you as part of getting back on the freeway. We've offered that. That's a $4 million savings to the city, and they have refused. So when you're looking at the city, the state, the county, all we're seeing is more and more ways that they have decided to make money off the small business. And that small business cost is going to be passed on to all the citizens. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. Well, now I'd like to introduce Dallas Foster, the owner of Texas Boys Balloons, and also an entrepreneur featured in our new study. Dallas? Thank you. When we started our business, uh, seven years ago, we started it based on the ordinances that were current in, in place in Houston. Um, we feel like the rug has been ripped out from underneath us. Uh, the city has taken more than 75% of our business away from us. And quite frankly, uh, it's taken a lot from the businesses here in the city of Houston. Uh, we supply advertising for those businesses, those small businesses that can't afford the expensive media, the television, the newspapers. Um, going into business, I realized very quick that a business with no sign is a sign of no business. And there's a lot of businesses that don't have signs after hurricanes, after, after just uh, the expensive uh, sign costs. Um, the current ordinance has so many problems with the ban on inflatables and attention getting devices. Currently, the city of Houston is fixing to find out that there's a huge problem with it because it's going to ban Christmas. I hate to say that, but the city of Houston is going to ban Christmas. Um, it will not allow scintillating flashing lights and uh, for any commercial use. So if any, any commercial business uses Christmas lights, to attract attention to bring business into their business they're going to be in violation of the city ordinance um, we're asking the city to please reconsider again this ordinance and repeal it take it away thank you